I am Mel Robbins, and as a best-selling author and host of The Mel Robbins Show, I've met so many inspiring women, women who are leaders, teachers, mothers, and friends. Now, I want to know who are the remarkable women in your life, because we want to share their stories. Hello, and welcome to WBOY's special look at the remarkable women of West Virginia. Late last year, along with all of the stations across the U.S. that are owned by our parent company, Nextstar Broadcasting, kicked off a search for our country's most remarkable women. The nominations were overwhelming, and things were no different here in the Mountain State. Over the next 30 minutes, we will introduce you to the four finalists from our area, along with some other amazing ladies from West Virginia. We'll start right here in Clarksburg with the story of one of our four finalists, Joanne McNemer. Reporter Abby Lawhead tells us more about Joanne. The heart of Joanne's journey began with her grandparents, who were struck and killed by a drunk driver. When dealing with her own grief, she wanted to make a difference in her community by working with substance abuse prevention. I have provided prevention education and different information dissemination pertaining to substance misuse on a local, state, and national level. And what I have learned that I try to instill with everyone that I meet, prevention works. Treatment is available and recovery happens. Joanne knew that the next step to improve her community was to run for Clarksburg City Council. I, along with Mayor Sam Lopez, who is also a family member, started the very first Mayor's Youth Council in the city of Clarksburg, and it's still going strong, and that is part of my legacy, working with the youth and seeing it continue after many years makes me feel very proud. When Joanne's family encountered another tragedy after her sister, Teresa, was murdered, this led her to advocate for victims of murder, domestic violence, and help them find their voice. And part of my healing from the trauma was to be able to not only heal myself, but to be motivated to bring others with me on that life's journey. To read the full exclusive interview with Joanne, go to WBOY.com. Reporting for 12 News in Clarksburg, I'm Abby Lawhead. I did go in and ask the VP at that time if there might be a career opportunity for me when I graduated, and he said they couldn't hire a woman in that position. Still ahead, we will hear from Sarah Amon about how she overcame obstacles in her professional life and still giving back. That's next on WBOY's Remarkable Women Special. Home Finders Plus Real Estate, a woman-owned business for over 26 years, is proud to recognize Remarkable Women of West Virginia. Selling your home is about getting the maximum return. With over 50 years of combined real estate experience, Monica Goral and Joe Owen Crowley are in business to sell your home. Buying, selling, relocating, or investing. How do you get the most out of your property? Trust the professionals at Home Finders Plus. We understand the business of real estate. Call, email, or visit homefindersplus.com. As we said, we had no shortage of deserving women from around North Central West Virginia. Let's learn more about another one of our four finalists. Here's Abby Lawhead again with more on Sarah Amon. Sarah Amon is one of four finalists for the Remarkable Women Contest. What made Sarah stand out was her career achievements, community involvement and professionalism, as well as her family devotion. From the beginning, Sarah's career was unique when she was one of two women in the accounting department at Marshall University. When she was searching for jobs, she realized that many accounting firms weren't hiring women at the time. But I did go in and ask the VP at that time if there might be a career opportunity for me when I graduated. And he said they couldn't hire a woman in that position. But later on, they did offer me a job. So they did change their stance on women in the industry. Sarah continues her involvement and support towards several local charities, but her time spent as the campaign chair at the United Way of Harrison County was the most rewarding experience during her years of service. They're always giving back, giving back, trying to help other people. And like the United Way and Medbrook Charities, they touch a lot of people. And, and when you go to the different agencies, you see what, where the needs are. 
Sarah said one of the most important life accomplishments has been a 50-year marriage with her high school sweetheart and raising their three sons together. She also expressed how lucky she is to have such a close-knit family. Our family's been great. I, you know, I'm just so fortunate and uh, just always want to be around and, and we want to be around them and their children and watch them. We're lucky they're here. So we got to watch our grandkids grow up. To read the full exclusive interview with Sarah, go to WBOY.com. Reporting for 12 News in Clarksburg, I'm Abby Lawhead. While this next woman is from the southwestern part of our state, her name is known all over the country. Here now is the story of Huntington, West Virginia's fire chief, Jan Rader. Jan Rader made history on April 12, 2017 when she was sworn in as West Virginia's first female fire chief. She has served with the Huntington Fire Department for more than 22 years and credits her parents' dedication to their community for her love of public service. There's something special there that she brings, that she brings out the best of all of us. And that's just one of the many reasons that Huntington Mayor Steve Williams mm -hmm. nominated Raider for Nextar Media's Remarkable Women Contest. I just try to do the right thing, ethically and morally, and uh, unfortunately we've been uh, embroiled in the opioid epidemic, and um, I think my medical background, being also a nurse and an old paramedic, has really helped in that regard. And it's very technical now, like when I came on, Almost 26 years ago, the trucks weren't automatic. When we created the Office of Drug Control Policy, she's the first person I called. But not long after that, Hollywood came calling. It's sad when you can drive around the city and say, oh, somebody died there, somebody died there. Right. Her fight, along with two others against the opioid crisis, was highlighted in the Netflix documentary Heroin which was nominated for an Oscar. So we just didn't dream uh, that it would be um, as popular or as meaningful as it has become. To me, it's a documentary that shows real world um, reality here. Rader and her two co-stars were even invited to the Academy Awards. While she expected glitz and glam, she didn't expect that the documentary would catch the eye of some of Hollywood's A-listers, like Meryl Streep. She's, she's very gracious, and obviously she had seen the documentary and, and really uh, said, she said her words to me were, I love what you're doing in Huntington, West Virginia. And, and a kiss on the cheek, so, I mean, how can you beat that, Meryl Streep? <laughs> Former President Barack Obama was also impressed with the work he saw in that film. Raider and her co-stars were invited to attend a discussion at the inaugural Obama Foundation Summit. Her dedication has been noticed by the current administration as well. First Lady Melania Trump, who has made the opioid crisis a priority, has met with Raider twice in Huntington. But Jan Raider stands and holds up the person who is in the most vulnerable position. Mm -hmm. But then she can also go and stand with the greatest of the great in the world. And what came next? Raider says felt like a scene we'll out of a movie. An email that she had been selected as one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people of 2018. And when I read the email, I was I thought somebody might be playing a joke on me. And no matter how many accolades she receives. Raider gives all the credit back to the community she represents. It's, it's like a recognition that Huntington, West Virginia is, is changing lives. The Time Magazine article was written in part by West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. But Jan gets out there and does the job every day and saves people's lives. She's educating people. She's teaching them. She's trying to keep them clean. I can't tell her how much I appreciate her. So I want young women to know no matter where they are, whether they're here or all across the country or the world, that, you know, the sky's the limit. They can do what they want to do. It's for people that need extra help. Uh, we called it the working poor because they work, but yet they can't get ahead. We will see how Marianne Spadafore is helping people in need in her community. That's up next on WBOY's Remarkable Women Special. Whether buying or selling your home, it is the largest investment most people make in their life. 
For 25 years, Monica Goral, Joe Allen Crowley, and the professional team at Home Finders Plus Real Estate have been helping you with your real estate needs. We would like to take this time to thank you for your trust and confidence in our professional team of realtors, where experience counts. Home Finders Plus Real Estate, service you deserve, people you trust. Welcome back to our Remarkable Women special. We have yet another deserving lady from North Central West Virginia to tell you about. Here is Shayla Klein with the story of Mary Ann Spadafore. Mary Ann Spadafore is one of the four finalists for the Remarkable Women competition. She's involved in several volunteer clubs and won a couple of awards for her contribution to them. Mary Ann started volunteering in the 70s when she worked with the Women's Club of Shinston to create a handicapped parking spot downtown. My husband was a physical therapist. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he was always noticing things, you know, and and we just, you know, we were talking, well, yeah, there isn't one. So we decided to, you know, talk to the council and try to get a place in Shenston where it, where it could be used well. Since then, she's been involved in sponsoring a fire safety program for elementary students, giving coats to children in the county, working with her church, and as PTA president, Marianne helped Big Elm Grade School secure the funding for a new school from the West Virginia School Building Authority. I didn't realize I had to give a speech when I was going with the principal and the uh, um, Mr. Kittle. And uh, going up in the car, he said, hey, "You have your speech ready?" And I'm thinking, "What?" <laughs> No. So I, I sat literally in the back seat of the car and wrote a speech. Currently, Marianne is involved in Amy's Attic. The program is sponsored by the Clarksburg League of Service and operates three days a month. It's for people that need extra help. Uh, we called it the working poor because they work, but yet they can't get ahead. So they come in and get used good, you know, needed goods and everything's new. Mary Ann says that she's thankful for her family who have been her biggest supporters. She says of all the things she's done, she's most proud of raising her family. For WBOY, I'm Shayla Klein in Bridgeport. Well, whether it's working at the local hospital, volunteering as a firefighter, maybe serving as an EMT, or raising three kids, our next remarkable woman has her hands full. Catherine Guyon introduces us to Sarah Cumberledge. I'm always running somewhere, ask anybody. <laughs> While she's running, Sarah Cumberledge is usually juggling her job. My full-time job, I work over at Wetzel County Hospital. I'm the physician office coordinator. Volunteering. I'm also a volunteer firefighter for New Martinsville Volunteer Fire Department. Her newfound passion. And then this year, I decided to take classes and become an EMT. <laughs> and raising three boys. Jacob is 11, Jared's eight, and he'll be nine, and then Jackson, Jackson's three. So why keep so busy? It's to know that I'm there at somebody's time of need. I could be the last person that person sees, but I want to make sure I can try to help them. And it's not, you know, it's not for the glory. It's because I want to truly be there and help people. Right now, Sarah is working on her national EMT certification and hopes to become a paramedic, but still goes out on calls. I drop everything to go on calls. <laughs> so those tones drop and I just run and at the same time is taking firefighting classes. It's not an easy job, it really isn't. It takes special people to actually do it and have to go through that because we see some of the worst stuff ever. But, you know, it's those ones that you do save and, you know, they're grateful for it. But with her boys is where she loves to be. I didn't know I wanted them as much as I did at the time, but now that I have them, it's, it's an amazing feeling. They keep me really busy, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. In fact, they love being part of her career. They just think it's the coolest thing ever. We, we even went and got like a Dalmatian puppy because we wanted a fire department dog. So the kids just absolutely love, love the fire department EMS. They think it's just awesome. For Sarah, all the long hours are worth it just to set an extraordinary example for her boys. You know, no matter how hard you work, there's going to be people that need you. I mean, it doesn't matter. I don't want them to give up on anything. I always say if you start something, finish it. Kindness goes a long way. You can always be kind. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you a cent. Still to come, we'll hear from Joan Chambers about how she used kindness in her role as an educator and as a volunteer. 
That's next on WBOY's Remarkable Women Special. Moving here the first time, we were referred to Home Finders through one of my coworkers at the FBI. Because of my career and the career moves that I've made, we have made as a family, it's very important that your entire family is comfortable with the community. Uh, and that goes for obviously my wife and our three children. They really helped us find a neighborhood that fit everything we were looking for. So much so that we've actually lived here twice. And that's, um, I think that says a lot. Welcome back to WBOY's Remarkable Women Special. Next, we're going to meet a woman from Wayne County who has touched the lives of many children over the years. Marilee McAuliffe has the story of Joanne Chambers. Being nominated as one of our Remarkable Women was a title Joanne Chambers seemed reluctant to accept. I was dumbfounded to tell you, what? My daughter did what? The oldest of nine siblings, Chambers says caring for her brothers and sisters came naturally, and she embraced her role in the household. As long as I was around, nobody ever missed the bus. I was going to make sure you got there and got home. Chambers has quite the resume, teaching elementary students in Wayne County, West Virginia, first at Crockett, then Lavalette for 31 years. She would be principal for 15. Between graduating from Buffalo High School and attending Marshall University, Joanne found work as a waitress in Lavalette, but that's not all she found that summer. And he came in one day if I was going to work all day, and I said, well, unless you've got a better plan, and evidently he had a better plan. His name was Nicholas Donald Chambers. Nicholas, what you call Better known as Nick. Uh -huh. And I met him in June of 1965 at Long's Parkette. That was my first job out of high school. I was a curb girl. Like many young men at the time, Nick went overseas to fight in the Vietnam War. But even after the war, Nick would find himself in a battle of a different kind. He was in the Navy. He was exposed to Agent Orange, which we didn't know. He was a diabetic, and we got a uh, VFT. W magazine that says exposures to uh, Agent Orange causes diabetes, so they start doing the testing, and yes, that was. They learned that because of his exposure to Agent Orange, his probability of getting colon cancer was high. In 2003, Nick had stage four colon cancer. He had a colon resection done at the Huntington VA, and he lasted 25 months. He died August the 6th, 2005. What do you think Dad thinks about Mom right now? <laughs> A huge daddy's girl. <laughs> so uh, I know he looks down on her every day with with love. In the months that followed, Joanne found a new calling. After caring for children for most of her life, she turned to assisting veterans at the Woody Williams VA in Huntington, where she would spend thousands of hours volunteering. I've done I've done inpatient bags, I've done No Veteran Dies Alone, I've driven the Cursey van, I've made phone calls, you know, whatever they need done, I'll give it a try. Over the course of 15 years, Joanne accumulated nearly 10,000 hours of volunteering at the Huntington VA. The one task in particular that is truly remarkable is the time she spent with veterans, just lending an ear, perhaps for the last time. It's called No Veteran Dies Alone. And if they find out that the veteran has no family at all, and sometimes that happens, but you would go in and you report to the nurse uh, in charge, and she would give you a bag. You could have, you had a, a tape player that played music. You had books you could read. But you would sit with the veteran, and you do your three or four hour shift. And I did have one veteran who passed away on me. Her focus is to to give back there because of my dad's wishes. You know, when he was alive, he wanted to help other veterans and he wanted them to, to make that a project of theirs. And I think it was important to her to keep that going. Beth nominated her mother Joanne after witnessing her turn profound grief into a project of love and compassion towards total strangers. I'm hoping that my being there lets them know that somebody cares about them, that they're not truly alone. And that you're never truly alone. You may not have been fortunate enough to call Ms. Chambers your principal, but we could all learn a lesson from how she lives her life day to day. Kindness goes a long way. You can always be kind. It doesn't, it doesn't cost you a cent. Beth's not the only one. We have a feeling someone else would also be rather proud. Remarkable women are everywhere, especially nurses in hospitals and healthcare facilities over the world. 
Training those nurses is crucial, and with the healthcare industry involving with new technology and improved medicine, David Horak introduces us to a woman who keeps up with the changes in the classroom that she's called home for so long. At Montgomery General Hospital, finding the right nurse aides is essential to providing the best care for patients. If they live close, if they are real energetic when we interview them, if they have a good background knowledge, a good, you know, course education. And training those nurse aides requires the right teachers, especially those who never stop educating them, ever. My name is Loretta Long. I'm 89 years old. Since completing her training in 1953, Loretta Long worked in the emergency room at Montgomery General and currently teaches aspiring aides, never missing a class or clinic. Well, almost. The only time I've ever missed work is when I had my children and I had my children and came back to work. She's really pushed, pushed me at times. She's kept me in line at times and I do claim her as my adopted mom. Kathy Hagen, who oversees employee health and infection control, nominated Long for countless reasons, including how well prepared her students are to take on the ever-changing field of health care. Once Loretta would do her teaching part and they would come to the clinical part, they knew what they were doing. Loretta had labs before to get them ready before they went out on the floor to do actual clinical care to the residents and they pretty much know as soon as they hit that unit what to do and what's expected. Although Long lost her husband of 43 years, she is still going strong with the passion and dedication shown through both her teachings and the very students she taught. She has a memory that is beyond compare. I mean, she can remember things that I even forget. I have taught nurse aid so long that, you know, the lesson plans aren't hard. You just have to put the new in. An attentive educator, a committed caregiver, and a remarkable woman. If you look at her and think, if I could go on like that, whenever I get to be that age, it will be a true blessing. She is just amazing at what she does. And I prayed and asked the Lord, I'd like to teach until I was 90. And maybe that will be when I retire. Maybe that might be that I'll continue on as long as the hospital works with me. And by the way, Loretta will celebrate her 90th birthday this December. When you can be authentic and you realize that God's given you that ability to reach out and help somebody else. And that's what we're here for, is to reach out and make the world a better place because we are here. We'll look at what Lotus McDowell is doing with her abilities to serve her community. That's next on WBOY's Remarkable Women Special. Monica, why do you think Home Finders Plus has been the number one real estate company for over 25 years? Let's hear what the agents have to say, Joellen. Integrity. As a company, we always do the right thing. We always pay attention to detail. We care about our clients. Real estate is our full-time profession. You don't just get one agent, you get an experienced team. Our company values integrity. We've always gone above and beyond for our clients. Service you deserve, people you trust. Now it's time to learn more about our Remarkable Women National Finalists. Shayla Klein introduces us to Lotus McDowell. Lotus McDowell is one of the four finalists for the Remarkable Women competition. She's a painter and likes to paint with watercolors. McDowell owns Artworks, a green and purple gift shop that specializes in custom framing. The store burnt down in October and she reopened the store in a new location only two months after the fire. I think we added something to Bridgeport and Harrison County in general, so I felt like this was not the time to call it quits. I figured I still got a good 10 years left. Aside from the shop, McDowell likes to use her creativity to design temporary housing for the Clarksburg Mission. I wanted to make them really nice because I wanted them to feel, hey, I am somebody special. You know, I'm not just getting all this sorry looking leftover furniture. They've made this beautiful and I, 
I'm valued and I'm appreciated. McDowell says that she hopes to continue to help others and leave behind a positive legacy. And she encourages others to use their talents to help others too. When you can be authentic and you realize that God's given you that ability to reach out and help somebody else, and that's what we're here for, is to reach out and make the world a better place because we are here. And I think that's the most important thing that um, when you've been given the opportunity to do it and you've had good stable life, reach out to somebody else and help them. You know, make their lives stable because of being around you. More information on Lotus McDowell is available on our website on the Remarkable Women tab. For WBOY, I'm Shayla Klein in Bridgeport. And congratulations again to Lotus McDowell for being our area's national finalist. Lotus will be invited to the uh, New York area for a taping of the Mel Robbins show, where the national winner will then be announced. Earlier this month, a reception was held to honor all four of our finalists from North Central West Virginia. The finalists were joined at the Bridgeport Conference Center by friends and family. A video feature on each woman's accomplishments was shown to the audience. Each woman also received a token of appreciation from HomeFinder Plus Real Estate, the sole sponsors of the Remarkable Women Project. It was such a great evening. You know what, being a woman-owned business, uh, we were excited to showcase the women in our community that that help other people. You don't hear about them too often and to be able to recognize them and someone get to go to New York and be on TV is wonderful. Seeing all of the people that were here this evening, that were here to support the four nominees and then also looking back in the number of nominees that were submitted that you know, they had to go through to uh, pick the four for this evening. It's a wonderful opportunity. We're glad to be a part of it, happy to be a part of it and wish the, um, the winner a lot of luck on a great time in New York at the Mel Robbins Show. And you can find each of our Remarkable Women stories in the Remarkable Women section of WBOY.com. You'll find it right underneath the community tab right there along the top of the website. Thank you for watching this special look at the remarkable women of West Virginia. And remember to tune in to the Mel Robbins Show on March 26th for more stories of remarkable women from all over the country and to see who the big winner is. Goodbye for now. Finders Plus Real Estate congratulates Lotus McDowell for being selected WBOY's Remarkable Woman.